Tell me what a series is. The sum of the numbers. It's the terms listed with pluses in between. Guys, I'm sorry to bore some of you who are looking at your phones and not at me. I hope that means you can pass your test. Okay, so geometric series means I'm, I'm adding and there's a constant ratio between the terms, okay? Difference in an arithmetic series and a geometric series is what? Geometric multiplies and divides between terms. Arithmetic adds and subtracts between terms, okay? All right, so we have two types of geometric series. Thank you for stopping my whole lesson to tell me you had to sneeze. All right, first one we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about finite series. What does finite mean? It ends. It has a stopping point. It doesn't go on forever, right? So if you look on your geometric sequence slash series formula sheet, Okay. You will see a little formula S sub N equals A sub 1. So first term, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. You might want to mark that as finite. Will you pass that in? Huh? Mark which one as finite? This one? Okay. That's the sum of a geometric finite series. How can you tell that it is finite? How can you tell that from the equation though? Okay, let's say it looks like this. It won't have a number on top. Yeah, it won't have an infinity sign. It does have a number on top. The number on top indicates the number on top indicates that it's finite. If there was an infinity sign up top, it would be infinite, right? Okay. So tell me, without plugging in 1 through 16 for this, now first of all, I can tell that this is a geometric series by the equation how. And the exponent here, right? Remember the form of a geometric sequence or series? The rule, a sub n equals the first term times r to the n minus 1. It looks like that form, right? What would be the first term in this series? 4. What is the ratio? 3. 3, right? So, let's find the sum. I'm using this formula, right, because it is finite. Y'all ready? You know it's finite because there's a number here. There could be an infinity. We've done some infinity. We've looked at some infinity. We haven't really done infinity. We've done right to that. Dot, dot, dot is also infinity. That's correct. All right, so the sum here, what's the first term? Four. One minus. Now I need R to the N. So R is 3. What is N? Last term number. Okay. 16 divided by 1 minus R. It's a calculator problem. So I'm going to do the top first. 1 minus 3 to the 16 divided by negative 2 times what's outside? 4. 4. What is it, Joseph, to 8, 6? <laughs> Say again. All right, so look, if you listed all those out and then you had to add them, you're in for a world of work, right? I mean, that's a lot. But if you know the formula, you can just plug in, it's done like that. 
that easy enough? Is this so, the only see, that's the only thing with finite. No, we'll do recursive tomorrow. Do y'all need to do one more? Or is that okay? Speak up. Do one that's going to Guys, I need you with me, okay? When everybody's got separate things going on, it gets quite confusing. Where did I get what? Three. Three is the R in the equation. Because the form of geometric looks like this, so R is the one that has the exponent hooked to it. What else? Um, one that's actually I don't know that they'll get harder than that, but let's see. So the end is for the last... Actually, I should say not the last term number. It's the last term number if it starts at 1. Let me, let me correct that. I should say, come on, because this will come into play a couple times from now. It's the number of, if my pen will work, it's the number of terms, which doesn't make a difference in this problem because it's the same thing. But what if it asks me to sum from 4 to 8? Well, then, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's the end. It's the number of terms that there are and not the last term. That's my fault. I apologize. Yeah, well, like, I was looking at one on your homework starts at zero instead of one. Yeah. All right, so let's say I went from one to 12. Eight times three. This is from your homework. Since you say that it's harder on your homework, find the sum. You try it. All right, some of you are plugging in, some of you are not. I'm going to guess if you're not, it's a calculator issue. When you put this in, you have to be very, very careful. Okay. One minus only the three over two. Now remember, fractions need to be in parentheses. Only that one goes to 12. When I divide it, I'm going to need to divide it by one minus three over two. Yeah. I was wrong. Then I'm going to need to multiply it by what was the first term? Eight. Does that make sense? I'll show you again. You can only sum certain geometric sequences that are infinite um, unless it's what we call a partial sum. Okay. And in that case, really, a partial sum is just a finite, a part of a finite. So we're only going to look at two types of infinite, one that you can and one that you can't. And I want you to think about why. If I gave you... Yeah, why you can't find a sum for sum. Because it goes on forever. Because if you had a ratio, if each time you're increasing your number, right, it's continuing to get bigger, and if you add it together, you can't sum a list of numbers like that, right? But if it's getting smaller, you can because it actually approaches a value. So only when your ratio is less than one, okay? If it's greater than one, and you do have one like this on your test where it will say find the sum of the geometric series, but the R is gonna be bigger than one,
then you would say, let's see, if r is greater than 1, then the sum does not exist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, if it's less than one, so you might want to see on your your formula sheet the last one. Because negative isn't really going to impact it like that. We're we're just looking at the ratio itself. So, the sum of a, an infinite. So you might want to write infinite is first term divided by 1 minus r. This is probably the easiest formula on here. If r is less than 1. No, that's just saying it only works if r is less than 1. So let's look at 2. Ah, okay, okay, okay. All right, take a look at this one. The first question I have is can it be sum? If so, what's yes. the sum? Yes, yes, because it's less than 1. Now, the formula is really easy. Yes. So it is first term. And if it's not in this correct form, you could always plug 1 in to find the first term. Now, remember, first term is assuming that I start here at 1, right? Okay, so first term is, what's 5? 5. five. Over 1 minus, and what's R? So what is 5 over 0. 0.2? Yes. Now, just to prove a point, and we won't do this for any of the others, but I just want to show you because it seems it's hard for me to fathom that to continually add numbers from now to infinity that it sum to a certain value. That's hard for me. That's hard for me to think about. It seems like it should all be infinity to me, right? Yeah. But it really, really does. And so, what I want us to do I want. All right. So, y'all plug in one, two, three, four, five, six. Each row, plug in one, and let's see what you get, and let's add them together. Wait, wait, if we one, didn't we already? Yep, what is it? I got five. Five. What'd y'all get for two? Four. What'd y'all get for three? Anybody on that right? I got 2.56. For 4? What we get for 3? Row 3 is falling slack on me here. 3.2. Notice how they're going down, right? How about 5? How about six? We're replacing I with the value given. What is it? One point, we'll say 1.4. All right, now do 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This will be the last one. Once we get through 12, it should be enough to see it. Start, it should start getting closer and closer to zero. I got 1.31. 1. 1. How about... I just I just want to do this less. All right, one point six three. All right, what about so this was seven? How about eight? One point oh oh four. How about nine? How about ten?
11. And 12. 412. Are you just making that up, Joseph? It is 1.04. Is that not right? It is right, but it's like it out. Oh my goodness, y'all. How about 12? Point three, what? Four, 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 six. All right, now somebody add all those numbers up. Oh my gosh, y'all. Oh, thank you, Kirk. 1.63. Oh, Actually, hit enter once you get to 10. Is that 63 or 4? 63. I can't tell what's after 1.3. 1.04. <laughs> What is it? Now add these two in and see what it becomes. So look what's happening. I'm just trying to prove a point here to show you. That if you continue to do this, it's going to get closer and closer and closer to 25. The, yeah, the value will get closer and closer. The term number will get closer and closer to zero. The sum will get closer and closer to 25. If you could add to infinity, it would sum to 25. <laughs> Think about 25 being that asymptote. It's getting closer and closer. You can always find the sum of a series by finding each term and then adding them together. But this is infinite. So I was showing you we can add a whole bunch of terms and it's going to get really close to this 25. So it's not like necessarily going to get to it. If you could add to infinity, it would. Shh, 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 shh. Guys. No, this is all you have to do is the formula. Oh, that's just like. I was just showing you just a. Yeah. I was showing you why. One more. Um, come on. All right, you find the sum on your own, and we'll come together and do it together. So that's, that's an N. Yeah, it can be N or I. It doesn't matter. Is that little like letter? Just because it like kind of works. It's Joseph, do the problem. <laughs> Ratio is greater than one. Something is just. Yeah. Good Trick question. <laughs> So the ratio is bigger than one. 